Dear Diary, Today I found out that dozens of stories about Andrew Jackson made the rounds during the 1828 election. Years before he ran for president, Jackson was a judge in Tennessee. Being surrendered. The iron will that made being surrender also made Jackson a powerful president. Both Jackson's parents had died before he was 15. He had to grow up quickly. He showed his toughness during the American Revolution at age 13. He won national fame during the War of 1812. He defeated the Creek Indians at Horse Shoe Bend. His nickname told something about his character. The Creeks called him Sharp Knife and his own men gave him the name Old Hair Green. President Jackson waged war on the Bank of the United States. He disliked the bank. He thought it was too powerful. The bank had a great power because it controlled loans made by state banks. When the bank's directors saw the state banks were making too many loans, they limited the amount these banks could lend. Jackson did not like Nicholas Biddle. He was the president of the bank since 1823. Jackson believed that Biddle used the bank to benefit only the rich. Biddle and other Whigs worried that the president might try to destroy the bank. They got two Whig senators, Henry Clay and Daniel Webster. They thought of a way to save the bank and defeat Jackson. At the same time, Jackson soon found out the bank was trying to kill him. But he found, but I will kill it. He was determined to kill the bank first. Jackson vetoed the bank bill. He gave two reasons for his veto. First, he declared the bank unconstitutional, even though the Supreme Court had ruled in the bank's favor. Second, Jackson felt that the bank was a monster that helped the rich at the expense of the common people. The Whigs made the bank a major issue in the election of 1822. Henry Clay ran against Andrew Jackson. When the votes were counted, Jackson had won a stunning victory. People had supported Jackson and rejected the bank. The bank would have to close in 1836. Jackson couldn't wait. He ordered Secretary of Treasury Roger Taney to stop putting government money in the bank, but instead, Taney deposited federal money in state banks. The loss of federal money crippled the Bank of the United States. Its closing in 1836 would contribute to an economic crisis.